Let me welcome everybody. My name is Daniel Durish, and I'm your host of this session of SEOs Rails. This is another virtual session. Uh, before pandemic, we used to have this as a conference, uh, I think the largest Central European SEO conference. And today, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Alexander Roots or Russ. <laughs> this is a moment of fun from uh, SEO, uh, uh, who is an SEO expert in Austria, one of the most experienced ones. And he is also uh, CEO of Evergreen Media. And one or another interesting thing about him is that he regularly shares his SEO knowledge on his YouTube channel with more than 70,000 subscribers. And his YouTube channel is in German. And Alexander will today talk about how to design beautiful brand search engine result pages. So my question to you, Alexander, is uh, why should we optimize for brand visibility in search engine uh, result pages and how to optimize, how to design it beautifully as your presentation says? So please enlighten us and start with your presentation. Perfect. I'm super happy I got invited. Um, I I had so much fun at the conference, uh, I think already two years ago. And um, today, as Daniel said, we are going to talk about um, optimizing, designing be a beautiful brand SERP. Uh, to give you like a little, little context to a uh, little introduction, um, you guys have to uh, give me the possibility to share my screen. Okay, now it should work. Perfect. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the interruption. So um, when we talk about a, a brand search, uh, what I mean by that is somebody like a user is searching for your brand. In this case, for example, Evergreen Media, and then they get shown a brand SERP. Obviously, it's not just page one. There are a lot of pages. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about, why it's super important to my own brand SERP, what you can do about it and how you can like use it to generate more conversions and how you can generate like a more positive brand experience. So I think the most important question, because um, I think a lot of SEO newbies will be like, this sounds super, um, super boring. What, what is this all about? Um, the important thing with brand SERPs is that in the customer journey, at some point, um, people will. Is the camera still on? Because I can't see the camera anymore. Anymore. You, you, actually, you actually stopped sharing. So camera is on, but you stopped sharing your screen. Yeah, but the camera is on. Okay. Camera Fine. is on. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. 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 Okay. So um, at some point in the customer journey, users and your brand says a lot about uh, your brand serp says a lot about how uh, what is your reputation um, how how structured is everything and so on and to give you a little little context why this topic is super hot right now and there's like a lot of people talking about this right now is that like after after corona or during corona a lot of like traditional clients um, started like a traditional client is a client that's not like focused on online, more on offline. And a lot, of, a lot of them like started doing SEO. And for example, we got a lot of those clients and the issue with those is how do you generate a quick win, an SEO quick win for a client that never had like SEO as a focus. So what the problem is, they often don't have like relevant pages that you can rank. You can't do convert, uh, can, uh, can't optimize snippets and so on. So you have to s do something that can actually help them get more organic traffic. And these traditional clients oftentimes have like tons and tons of brand, uh, brand uh, searches because people are super happy with their products and they know them from offline. So that's like, that's where you can like generate a quick win because don't forget somebody looks for looks for your brand, they are in at some point in the customer journey and oftentimes at the bottom of the funnel. So a better experience in your SERP 
will also improve conversions and like how they see you and so on, which is super important because people for a brand are like clients, potential clients, partners, potential partners, investors, brand advocates, and so on. And they will Google for you. And your brand SERP, if like, I will, I'm going to share again on my screen um, to show you a little bit, bit what search is like telling you about Evergreen Media, for example. So here at the top, we see uh, a Google ad, our own Google ad for our own brand. Then we have the, the homepage, site links, then different results about our brand. Then we are here. Have Google default panel with like reviews, contact information, and what I learn as a, as a normal user is, um, do they have like good reviews? How's their reputation in general? Um, what's what lo does their like content ecosystem look like? Um, know them? Then this is more like on the conver um, commercial side and so on. So if you like create a beautiful setup then it's super easy for someone searching for your brand to navigate uh, your brand and they can just start with the topic that's most general about uh, the commercial side, like working with you. They could start here. If they are about getting to know Evergreen Media and the people that work there, they can start here. If they want to see content, they can start here. If they are still researching, they start with the reviews and so on. So it's super important at this point to like deliver a beautiful experience like the updated information and just simply show your awesomeness and that's what we are going to talk about um in the following uh following like 15 minutes um what you should have learned by now is your brand serve is a reflection of your digital brand and how google sees it also in terms of entities so does google think um are you relevant to um it says a lot about your SEO in general. So if we like, uh, if we get a lead, I will first look at the brand SERP of the client because I can already see, Hey, do they have technical issues? Um, do, do they have, reaction? um, do they have positive reviews? Uh, when I look closer in the re reviews, what, what problems do they have? And so on. And a fantastic brand SERP improves freaking everything like even your offline marketing because if you talk about your company somewhere like at a conference people will like google for green media in my example and then get get the information in your brand serp so if it's cool awesome you have been represented perfectly if it's crappy then they will not convert to something um you like they won't work with you and now we're gonna really like the, the, the nitty gritty of it. So um, I would say how to rule your Google brand SERP and design it like to your liking. And before we like get into the concrete steps, um, what's really important um, at this point is like preparation. So um, definitely custom, which is obvious, but for many companies, it is not so obvious. So um, you want to ask questions like, at what point is he or she when they are making a brand search? Um, what problem do you want to be solved? I'm going to show examples for all this. Um, what is the ideal entry to your world? So in, for example, for Evergreen Media, it's really important that they check out our YouTube channel um, and, and learn about us, how we think about SEO and so on, because then it's really cool. the question you are always asking is um, how can I show the users who I am and make it relevant to them so not hey I'm so cool so more solution oriented for example it now for evergreen media um, our snippet for um, SEO and content marketing with business impact so we're all about not generating traffic but generating like revenue and uh, we help companies to scale their revenue and strengthen their digital brand and we're specialized on german speaking countries so in our brand what we are all about and what uh, if you like those things then we're definitely the right solution for you and when you plan your brand SERP, which you should definitely 
do is you have to think about what look and feel should it have, what image do I want to like uh, project. In our case, we want to be all about um, generating revenue and not like, like we don't like the feel of social and like uh, getting traffic. It's more about, hey, at the end of the day, how many more leads have you generated through SEO and so on. And you should really think about it. And then when you plan your SERP, you should think about what components can you generate in your SERP. So obviously everybody will have a homepage and sub pages. So this component you can use. Um, not everybody uses Google ads, so you should plan, do you want to use Google ads or do you, and do you not use Google ads? Do you have like um, a Google business profile or not? Do you have like a Wikipedia entry or not? And so on. So you should plan out what you can do and what you can't do. Because like, for example, for Evergreen Media, we don't have a knowledge panel because we don't have a Wikipedia entry. So when I'm planning my brand, I, I have to like think about that. And then what is your ultimate hook? So why should people work with you? So we are all about white hat SEO, business impact. And if you look at our SERP, if somebody like, they talked to me for 10 minutes and they were, ah, oh, it sounds like interesting media within like the first view, they know, okay, this is what Evergreen Media is all about. And if I want to like do this, then that's definitely the right choice for us. So, okay. Some preparation steps, which are definitely needed. And now we're going to really talk about optimizing life parts of your SERP. And we're going to go through it like step by step. So first part, so we have seven parts. There are more parts, but those seven parts you should definitely do. First part, easiest part. Um, lots of people are still not doing this. You should have been doing this test, is bidding on your brand. So we bid on our brand and make the ad, the Google ad fit to the rest of the brand SERP. So our, the rest of our brand SERP is very content-based about our content marketing ecosystem. And our ad is all about the commercials parts. Um, you can like uh, book single SEO packages. Um, we can also like take over your complete SEO. Um, and here you can check out like SEO cost, uh, case studies from real clients. So we made an ad that fits our complete concept of our brand. So beautiful entry point into your world um, and so on. But it depends on what your plan is, right? So that's what I said about planning your brand SERP. You can make your ad the way you want it to fit to the rest of your brand SERP. Then the second really, really, really important part is, um, it, it, it has like two solutions. So if you're, I would say noteworthy, then you ha probably have like a Wikipedia entry. Uh, it depends on your business size. And then it's really important to get something like this. So this is a, a, a different brand SERP of a very big company, like a uh, in a revenue a year um, and they get a box like this, a knowledge panel. You only get this if you have a Wikipedia entry and if you have it, it's a huge advantage in your brand SERP because not everybody has this and it makes you like look very professional, very, yeah, good to work with. If you don't have like India, we are 40 people, so you won't get a Wikipedia entry. Then you just work with your Google business profile. Um, the advantage here, in my opinion, is you have reviews, um, you have contact information and so on. The disadvantage of a Google business profile is obviously that this is like, like reach the competitors of us, which are like promoted very prominently, which you might not like, but you don't have a choice uh, in many cases. So part three is this part of your brand SERP. So this is... Every brand SERP has this. If you don't have, can have one column or two columns. If you don't have this, this it means that your either your information structure is bad, so you have a bad SEO structure, let's say, um, or you have an indexing problem, or you just did a relaunch, or, or uh, and so on. If you have this, everything is fine, and your homepage and site links, and. In terms of this part, what I really like about this, it depends if you have to like rank 
the front page for a keyword or not. In our case, we don't rank. Uh, for us, the homepage is just um, a brand entry point and not a page we really rank for NL. Um, then this is really the point to really shine and show how you can pr improve the life of the user. So as I already said, we're all about business impact, scaling revenue, uh, strengthening your digital brand and specialist on German. So your title tag definitely should be something about uh, in terms of like brand plus tagline and your message description can then go more into, uh, into detail how your brand is relevant to the customer. Super important uh, and, and, and something you should definitely think about what snippet uh, for your homepage. So let's say we have optimized this, we have optimized this, we have optimized our homepage. The fourth thing we're going to think about is this part. And that's like the most, in my opinion, most prominent thing um, are the site links uh, um, on desktop. There are four, uh, four results on mobile. I think there are even six results. And um, you have some control, but not full control over those um, site links, which sucks, but it's not changeable because is um, Google displays links that it anticipates will help the user with a brand search query. So mostly here you can uh, you won't find like SEO relevant pages. So you, where you like rank for generic keyword phrases, it's more about like the team about us, our guide, and so on. And what you really have to look out for here is. Most of the time what happens, pages that are SEO relevant, they have like a good title tag and a good meta description. And all pages that are not SEO relevant, optimized. And if you think about this, if you think about your brand SERP, it's absolutely essential to provide also um, non-relevant SEO, non, uh, non SEO relevant pages with a beautiful snippet. So for example, our team, about uh, they see a good snippet because they will show up here and generate impressions and make your make or break your brand SERP. Um, the thing here with those site links always is we always get this question from our, our clients is where um, are the anchor? So the link anchor from, and that's uh, rather confusing. So most most of the time, those anchors are pulled from uh, links on the homepage. So inter internal links from the homepage to subpages. Then what can also happen is they pull it from title text or in like certain cases, H1 headings. And so if Google like pulls one link from an internal link on your homepage, uh, one anchor from an internal link, then they do that on your uh, uh, entire website. They do it on a case by case basis, which makes it oftentimes very confusing. Then what sometimes also here happens here is languages um, are shown that's something you need to fix because most of the time that indicates that you have an uh, hreflang issue where the wrong tag points to the wrong language. So now we've already optimized everything that's above um, now something that's not new, but I would say newer is filling people also ask with your answers. So big brands, what they get is a people also ask box for their brand, where there are like specific questions, um, on brand, like, uh, what does Boston consulting group do? Uh, are they a good employer? how many employees do they have and so on. And if we click on those results here, then other people answer these questions uh, for Boston Consulting Group, which is obviously not the situation we want. So those questions answered with our content and not with other people's content. And how this works is it's pretty much exactly the same like getting Google featured snippets. Um, there's tons of content on our YouTube channel where, uh, where I explain how to get featured snippets, but actually it's super simple. The easiest way is to get on an FAQ page, um, exactly this question, 
um, in an H HTML heading like uh, H2 or, or H3, and then directly below in a paragraph, you answer the question. Um, if like you, or if you want to like figure out the ideal length, you just check out what's currently ranking in here. And um, a trick or trick, but the way it works is uh, what you should really like look for is the entities used in this um, in this text. Those should also user because Google works a lot with uh, with entity recognition in those in featured snippets, but also in people also ask boxes. Okay, now something that's really, really, really important for um, bigger companies is claiming all of your real estate. And we have optimized all these parts until now, and now we get to the other links because in your brand SERP, that's not, it's not only results from your website, there are also results from other websites because, uh, or it makes total sense because it's more important what others say about you say about yourself. What builds trust? A uh, trust is what other people say about you. And here, what I really look for is what I want to have rank. If I have like a, a large client, is their like uh, well, yeah, yeah, their most well looked after social should rank here. So, for example, our most important. Social profiles will be YouTube and LinkedIn. So they should rank uh, here. Then pos uh, partners that have positive stuff to say about you, for example, here, uh, then positive press and interviews. Um, we don't have that at this uh, year because we interviews are always with my name in the title tag and not with the brand. And if the brand is not in the title tag, it won't rank in uh, brand SERPs. And what I also like to fill those up is um, classic business directories like firm in, in Austria, it's Firmen ABC, uh, Valley, for, um, but that depends on the country you're in and you're optimizing for. What's really important if you like want to fill up your, uh, your results is everything you want to rank here sh must have the brand name in the title tag, otherwise, it definitely won't work. Then, and or you want to push up certain results. A few links can easily push those results up. And the cool thing is those are other websites. So you can also use low quality links, for example, on your, let's say, Facebook profile to push it up and to like create a beautiful cushion. What I mean by cushion is in terms of brand service, always I want to control the top 20 results. Why? Because if there's like negative press or some um, result with like a negative review and it's in, in the review snippet, I want to push that back. So I want to like control the 20, top 20 and then push things back. Um, if you have like a client that has like issues with ne negative press, what I would definitely recommend is a tool like SERPVU. Um, the tool helps you like tagging results if they're like positive, negative, or neutral. neutral they like um, analyze the entire top 100 because um, if something like starts ranking at spot 80 and it's negative, you can already start preparing to pr protect your brand SERP, your top 20 from that result jumping where it is seen because everything after the like third site uh, third um, search engine result page is totally irrelevant and so you just have to push it like if it's ranking like spot 23 everything is really uh, irrelevant you have solved the issue and it's, um, even if someone um, writes something um, negative about you and now the last um, and like most in, uh, advanced point, I would say is number seven, and that is influence recommended related searches. So with pretty much brand search, and the last part we have is this one, our related searches. And if you look at our related searches, um, we pretty pretty much control them the way we want. So there's no related search that's not exactly what we want to have there, and the way to influence those entities here is make people search for navigational queries. So something like 
evergreen media YouTube or evergreen media backlinks or evergreen media keyword research. Um, that's a two part story. Um, firstly, what's really important is to help people search. And the second really interesting part is this is how Google associates stuff with your brand. So if one of the recommended searches is evergreen media keyword research, then obviously Google also thinks evergreen media is highly relevant to keyword research. And that's not only helps you with your brand SERP, but it also helps you then make it easier to rank for the queries you're relevant to, in this case, keyword research. And how you influence this, I'm going to show you an example how we influence this. Um, is this what we do on our YouTube channel? Like it kind of dirty, but it's uh, it works really well. If you like do a YouTube video, you can, like can implement cards where you can recommend other videos. You can do like five videos um, in one video, so you can do five recommendations, and then you can't recommend more. And what, what we this box where we say, hey. If you want to like have more information about this uh, guide or this product, then Google Evergreen Media, blah, blah, blah. And that's how we influence our navigational queries. But there are like a lot of routes you can go with this. So we have, for example, also clients that um, influence their uh, related searches with totally other marketing channels like billboards or I think pretty much in every country there's a brand that's that's using in um searches in tv uh, spots and so on because then in large scale you can influence what people search and therefore what google relates to your brand like uh trivago um that's um a company that provides pretty much the same service they have like hotel trivago that's how they make their rankings in terms uh, for that keyword better. And that's like pretty much now we have optimized our brand SERP and it's like super low investment and it helps everything because all those measures were like pretty quick. Uh, they help you to protect your reputation. They will help you convert people bottom of the funnel that Google for your brand and it helps improve your first SERP impression. So if somebody talks to someone to your company, from your company, and they then later Google your brand, like easing first impression, which helps you convert them in whatever you want, like a lead or a sale, whatever. And that's it. That's all. Now you have like the perfectly beautiful designed brand SERP. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. It was a great presentation. And I'm glad that you finished with uh, mentioning online reputation, because this is the question I can follow with. And can you provide some recommendations or what, are, what is your experience on online reputation management? Like what about some large companies and, for example, highly ranked blocks with some uh, negative experience, mentioning some negative experiences or complaints? What, what, what are your recommendations on how to manage this? Very good question. Um, first of all, uh, most important part, I think, is monitoring. So there I would like recommend to where you can tag like um, all top 100 results uh, in terms of sentiment and then track, um, track how like um, dangerous results move to the front. And in terms of like really protecting yourself, um, it's all about like creating a cushion I would, I, I talked about. So like, um, actively ranking stuff for your brand. Those can be like business directories, social profiles, um, websites where you like, uh, did interviews and so on. I would like go a really active route about online reputation. So I would just rank stuff. So even if something negative comes along, it gets blocked from the top 20. Um, in case you have something negative ranking, um, I would always like um, start building links to the profiles or websites you want to have. 
my the trick we had like uh, with a large company is if you have like a negative result ranking, let's say we have like um, something in, in a huge paper and that result gets a lot of links, then uh, the trick is like getting those links to that result removed. Um, so what we for ex what you can do is like um, uh, try outreaching to them so uh, that people that link to that bad result remove their link. Or um, a really dirty trick is if uh, you have a commenting sentence and to that bad result is um, in the in the in the content and is follow and there's a comment section. And then uh, the, in the comment section, you can like drop a link, but that link is no follow. If you link to the exact same URL, then you can make that link on the page. That's how you can kill the link choose to that original result and so on. Um, but online reputation management is a crazy, crazy interesting topic. I could do a session on that alone. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe in the future we'll do that. Um... You mentioned also that uh, part of the results will be some company directories, company yeah. listings. Um, there is a question with, from our participants. Uh, what about, about directories that pop up in Google for company brand searches? Should we try to improve our listing or optimize other channels to outrank them? Or is it okay to have them there just hanging? Really good question also. Um, so my or our way to go about that is some business directories have really weird review systems where um you can just click star uh click on those stars and re that's really dangerous because somebody who doesn't like you could like um if that business directory gets uh, like a review snippet and they could just one star you so if Business directories that have that situation, I would try to push them out of the top 20. If it's a good, decent business directory, I would do everything to make it as beautiful as possible. So what we do for our clients uh, in every like important business directory, we will like create unique content so that the business di directory URL can because if you like do business directory entries and you have all of them have the same content, you obviously kill their potential for ranking. So it's on a case by case basis, but I, I always like a few important business directories in my top 20. Okay. And maybe so our participants, you can always uh, ask questions uh, at SEO at Slido. Um, and uh, for the next one, what about some tips on improving uh, business panel that is probably Google My Business or Google Business Profile results on the right in uh, Google? Do you have some tips on using, for example, offers or questions and answers, something like that? Um, so my rule of thumb for uh, Google my business uh, my business or Google business profile as it is called now um, is always fill it with as much information as you possibly can. So I'm a huge believer in like um, collecting reviews like on a on a daily basis. So if obviously if you're like a, a lead lead based uh, company and you don't get it's hard to get like consistently get reviews, but getting reviews is like pretty much the number one factor, um, what people look for and what also Google looks for in terms of ranking you, uh, in local search, um, images, um, and use all those cool feet, like posts, um, questions and answers. It also makes sense like to answer your own questions. Uh, uh, to, to like present your own questions and answer them because in, in a lot of niches, nobody asks, ever asks, ask a question of, uh, although they have questions. So can much just fill out as much as you can, the more information, the better, because this is information you control everything else in your brand SERP is something you not don't control a hundred percent. This is something you have control over and good imagery 
really sticks out. So the funny thing is um, Google just chooses based on uh, CTR which image it shows uh, first. And for us, for us, it's the view of our office, which is really cool. Um, but that's how you should work with, uh, with um, improving your, your business. Make it look amazing. Uh, make it uh, show like that you have an amazing reputation and give uh, the user as much contact details, up-to-date information as you possibly can. And it's totally worth it. So I don't know a single restaurant that does it. I think the most important part of, of like a local business is your Google business profile, like up-to-date information as much as possible and you're, you're fine. Great. Uh, maybe on a related note, uh, I have a question regarding structured data. What kind of or what types of structured data would you recommend uh, to be used uh, in addition to having a business website or company website, what kind of structured data from your experience work well that Google will feature them in the, in the search results? Um, I would always um, try. The problem is in the brand search, um, structured data is not that relevant unless you would say like in site links, you can get a site search box uh, what I would recommend in terms of brand SERP, um, implement on your homepage the site search box. Then in your site links, there will be like a search box where people can directly search within your website in the brand SERP. And that's a really cool feature. It doesn't make sense for smaller websites, but for shop it totally makes sense. And otherwise, the problem with structured data is the only result in your brand SERP um, that's that, that 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 is on your website is the homepage and your the homepage never uh, presents snippets so you can't get a real page so structured data is not relevant in terms of brand SERP o only the site search box. Okay, and what about what about uh, featured snippets? Have you had some? Uh... Uh, I mean, luck getting on position zero with uh, for some company brand searches. I think it's maybe not so common, but maybe for for larger companies it could work. Yeah, it can definitely. Uh, so you can. Um, that will obviously be a, be um, um, a navigational search. So something like brand plus, let's say jobs or brand. That's uh, how you can get um, featured snippets. Um, the issue with featured snippets uh, in this case is you um, Google just generates like featured snippets for random key keywords pretty much. So um, you will have first people are looking for in terms of brand searches and then figure out for which keywords is there the potential of a featured snippet because you can't actively create featured snippets you can only get featured snippets for queries where there already is a featured snippet i know this is a very complicated question it is it is and i i think that's another topic that we could just uh, take half an hour and talk about it so Let's let's keep to the next question. Um, how how successful is from your experience getting or how how, how difficult it is to get a successful listing on Wikipedia for brand name? So I know that there are like lots of Wikipedia editorial rules. Uh, we from from our experience, when sometimes clients ask, we wouldn't recommend them to start a new account and immediately post something because of course that's that that's could be um, seen as spammy from from the wikipedia editors but uh, have you been successful in this getting some uh, maybe of your clients listed and um, and how do you do it okay so um rather similar stance on wikipedia listings as you guys, because the thing is, that's what I why I explicitly said noteworthy. Um, a company with like forty people um, is not not noteworthy in terms of Wikipedia. So you can 
and like want to create your account with like um, a Wikipedia um, account that has like a strong history and so on. But from our experience, either you're not noteworthy or not. If you're noteworthy, um, your page will be created and then you can edit it and it is fine. Uh, and it will stick. If you're not noteworthy and you hire somebody to create that Wikipedia page, it's just a matter of days or weeks until that page gets deleted. So um, I'm not a big fan of creating a Wikipedia page. So we have like a uh, um, company that do like a billion to 20 billion revenue, then you're freaking noteworthy and Wikipedia will take care of itself. If you're a small company, don't waste time getting a Wikipedia entry. That's their stuff that's way, 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 way more important. And that Wikipedia entry will never, 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 never stick. I've never seen a Wikipedia entry stick for someone who is not noteworthy. I think, I think you summed it up well. And maybe then it makes more sense to just uh, enter the company name as a reference in some content that already exists because that's, I think, much easier. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I think we already had this question about directories, but maybe just once again, do you think that having directories in the first uh, Google page for, for brand search is all right, or should we just try to really get as much of our own content? Uh, not I, I know you, you mentioned that you are actually creating uni content, which is, I think, reasonable approach. But uh, what about like uh, trying to outrank all these directories with our own uh, social networks? And we have many of them, right? So is, is, what, what do you think like in the long term? Is, is it better strategy to just show our own channels or maybe also have a mix of other channels and this will add uh, to some authority or, or at least uh, trust, trust to, uh, to, to actually, yeah, the Google is not showing just our own content, but mixed content. Um, so uh, social profiles, are for me not your own content because the content is often just fine. And um, I would say it makes sense to rank as much active social profiles or whatever you call them, content profiles, um, as you can. So, for example, we only have like two super active social profiles, YouTube and LinkedIn. So it does make sense to rank social profiles that are not that active because that makes a bad impression. And then I rather fill it up with like business directories. But if you have like, um, so how many results are there on the page? Uh, for example, with us, if you have like an active social profiles, then definitely try to rank them all and get them in there, which should be actually pretty easy. Okay. And maybe last question if we don't have more questions on slido from my side is that uh, you have shown that google is um, displaying these uh, people also ask questions about different topics including brand names have you tried to rank uh, in these uh, questions or is, what, what's your approach regarding these questions because i know that some of these questions can also stem from content that's not positive to uh, brand uh, trustworthiness yes. and authority so what is your approach do you actually monitor these or do you work actively try to get your content to these questions um so i would definitely definitely on your brand sir work uh on getting your answer to ranking those boxes and the easiest way to do it uh, on a brand SERP is you have an FAQ page where you exactly answer those questions, where you exactly have that question in an uh, HTML heading, something like, like a paragraph below it. And, and then it's rather easy for something like Boston Consulting Group to get their content in there. What's sometimes the issue is that Google likes... Um, that there is like a different 
from sites. And that's sometimes we see that as a problem where um, it seems as Google wants diversity of like diversity of opinion in those places. So not everything is possible, but most of the time companies so in, in the case of Boston Consulting Group, this result is it's rather easy for a company to answer what do I do? Uh, am I like what am I doing to be a good employer? How many employees do we, do I have in Germany and so on? So I would definitely answer the, those on an FQ. Um, yeah. So you should definitely work on that monitoring um, monitoring those. We don't do that actively at the moment, um, but there are tools. I think even SEMrush, SEMrush offers, I'm entirely sure. I know SERP does, but I think SEMrush also already has a feature where you can like monitor those uh, people also ask, but, but I could be wrong there. Okay. I think we can close this up. There are no more questions. So thank you, Alexander, for joining us today. This was Alexander Rus from uh, uh, the CEO of Evergreen Media from Austria joining us today. And thank you again for your presentation. Thanks for the invitation. It was really, really cool to be here. Yeah. And hope to see you again uh, in person Definitely. sometime at, at another SEO ZRAS that will be uh, taking place in person. And thank you to all our participants for joining today. My name is Daniel Durish. I'm from Basta Digital and I was your host. And I'll be hosting another session of SEO ZRAS virtually. Uh, I think next month. And if you missed some of the uh, today session, you can always find it on YouTube. We will be posting it there maybe in a week or two. And until then, goodbye. And thank you again, Alexander. Bye.